Hello, hello, hello. Uh, this isn't the show starting. The show is starting momentarily. This is me just getting ready. The show is going to start in two minutes, probably a minute and a half, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be here with a Corona Cast comedy show. Uh, please just say hello. Uh, tell me if you hear me loud and clear. Also, let me clear up the background, right? I should not start a show just after cooking. There's too much stuff in the background. Let me remove this. Let me remove this. Let me remove this. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. How unprofessional is this? I've got sugar. I've got sugar in the background. What kind of a comedy club is this with sugar? I've got scissors in the background. What kind of unprofessional comedy club is this, ladies and gentlemen? The comedy chicken. Comedy Kitchen is about to get cooking. Comedy Kitchen is about to get cooking. Let's look at the time. It's going to start in one minute, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get up in one minute. Hello. Hello to Michael Pegg. Maybe I will show up on a film set with you. I did not know that you are in the film. Andre Pereira, your, mom, your dad's from Africa and he loves me. Very good. Then why isn't he watching? I hope you love me too. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's enough time just letting people get into the studio. Ah, I've got too much nonsense over there. Let me move this stuff, which shouldn't be in the background, and then we can start. Then we can start. As you can see, I was very busy today. <laughs> I think that's the best we can do. Let's get started with the Corona Cast comedy show in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Corona Cast Comedy Show. If it is your first time tuning in, this is a show where I, Deliso Chaponda, a stand up comedian, deprived of an audience because of the coronavirus, instead entertains you, the people of Twitch, the people of Facebook, the people of YouTube, people of Instagram, whatever. Uh, platform you find me on. I bring you jokes. I bring you thoughts. Some days this is a stand-up comedy show. Some days it's a talk show. Some day it is a cry from the heart as I am crumbling. Some days it is a call to arms. This show is whatever it is, depending on the day to tune in. You have come in on a good day, ladies and gentlemen. You have come in on a good day because this is a day, I was initially going to do a Corona Cast Comedy Casino. If you aren't aware of what the comedy casinos are, that's where I just do a kind of best of. I give you options of jokes, and you tell me which joke you like, and I do those ones. And I'm still going to do that, but I decided to take it to the next level, do something a little bit different, and let you in on how a comedian like me builds a comedy set. Now, of course, while I'm doing this, I'm going to resp be responding to the chat. So if you have questions, please uh, ask questions and I will answer them, particularly if I'm talking about the method of writing and building a set. And also, if you find something funny, put some LOLs up in there, say hello. I'll say hello back to you, Jem. I'll say hello to all of you. How are you? I'm doing fine. Okay, so let me explain how this works. I have a lot of jokes. I have absurd amount of jokes. You see all these notes? Do you see all these notes? Each one of these is multiple jokes. This is pretty much, actually there's this plus some others are the Corona cast. This is episode probably 130 or something. The jokes, I have lots of jokes, right? These are all jokes. And then I have old jokes and then I have, I've, Absurd amounts of jokes. If I actually put all my jokes together, I probably have five hours of jokes. I'm not saying that they're all good. Some of them are bad. Some of them are good. Some of them are brilliant. But when you got to turn that into a comedy set, like tomorrow in Liverpool, I'm doing two comedy sets at the Bombed Out Church, right? If any of you are near Liverpool, consider coming to check it out. But I've got to build a comedy set. What does that mean? That means I need to take all of my jokes and I need to pick out the best 20 minutes for the audience who come out. All us comedians do this. Comedians who have got past the point that they only have 20 minutes. Early in your career, all you've got is 20 minutes. And if you show up to a room and it's all old people and your jokes are young people, do, you know you're gonna suffer. <laughs> you know no one's gonna laugh. But as you grow, as you learn, you've got jokes about everything. How do you turn it into a set? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through how I build a set. 
But at the same time, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to do a comedy casino and you're going to choose which jokes I do. So let's say I'm starting from the point of me walking on stage. I have to introduce myself, right? But you can't introduce yourself and say, hello, my name is, my name is, my name is Slim Shady. You can't do that. You can't just introduce yourself. It's boring, right? So what you got to do is you got to introduce yourself in a funny way. So comedians will often deal with what they look like. Often the first thing comedians say will be about their weight or what they look like or their race, or it'll be something about them, something um, that people notice about them they bring out. So often I start with something about my heritage. So I might say something like, hello, I'm Deliso. I'm from Malawi, the world's number one supplier of Madonna babies. Boom, you know, something like that. Quick, pithy, something about where I'm from. And then I will elaborate by adding a story about Malawi because a lot of people in the UK don't know where Malawi is. So this is the heritage round of the Corona Cast Comedy Casino. You are going to choose one of these three options. What you got to do is in the comments, type out which one you want to hear. Do you want to hear the joke about me not speaking my language? Do you want to hear the joke about African name? Or do you want to hear the joke about politician father? Type away. Let me know which one you want. And I will let you know. I'll give it a moment. Type quickly. Type quickly. They're all slightly different. I'm glad you enjoyed that joke. The Madonna gag, um, Sean and Rui. So please vote away. Tell me which one you want to hear. Whichever one gets the most votes, the joke I'm going to do. Type them quick. I need something. Why not? Why am I not seeing the votes? There may be a lag. There may be a lag. African name. We've got one vote from African name from Andy Robertson. We've got a vote for my f don't speak the language on uh, Heritage Round. Reese Fender said it worked beautifully on BGT. Actually, that is not the joke I did on BGT, but it's very close. The joke I did on BGT is. I'm from Malawi. Madonna adopted a baby from Malawi. I missed my little brother. But yes, similar joke. It's Malawi and Madonna. <laughs> okay, how we do. Uh, oh, don't forget to DM. I will DM you my details. I will indeed. Okay, so we've got name. We've got another vote for first. So people either want name or don't speak the language. Can we get one more joy? One more, Joyce. Hi, you're from Malawi. You'd like to hear a joke? Well, I'm about to do a joke about Malawi. So vote for which one you want. Do you want to hear a joke about my father, the politician, African names, or not speaking the language? I am Chaponda, indeed. Hello, your good friend is my brother, Mass. Excellent. My brother, the doctor. We need one more vote because we are in a tie. We need someone to tie break. Someone, the first person who votes for either don't speak the language or African name is going to make me uh, do that one. African name. There we go. We've got the votes, ladies and gentlemen. Please vote quickly so that the episode does not go too long. So let's go with African name. So I've got an African name, Deliso, right? Normal African name, right? I didn't realize that it was hard for people to say. People butcher my name. And when I went to North America, it was absurd. They would always be like, Del Del Delso, Del Delso, Delso. Dilso, Dalso, Dil, Dal, I'm like Da Li So. How hard is that? It's three Da Li So. It's like three syllables. It's not the most complicated word. There's no click. What the hell? Da Li So. People, no, oh, no, Dalso, Dalso. And then it got even more bizarre, right? Because you got to understand, when I went over to America, I didn't realize how ignorant a lot of people in America. They find out you're from Africa. They say stuff like, "Are there cars in Africa?" And you just mess with them and say, "No, we ride the elephant." We put the bag in the trunk. We say, go, Dumbo, go. And people assume I'm talking about white Americans. No, the craziest questions I got was from black Americans. Because to them, Africa is the motherland. They come to you like, yo, you from Africa, dog. You from the motherland. Wakanda forever. They're so excited. And one dude said to me, yo, dog, can you do me a favor, man? Can you give me? An African name. Yeah, man, I want to do that Malcolm X thing. I want to cross out my slave name, replace it, bam, 
with an African name. So I said, fine. Your name is Namasauso. Good name. My brother's name. He was not happy. He said, no, no, no. I want a real African name. I want a name with a click. I want some no, 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 no. I said, okay, fine. Your name is not no, no, wow, no, no, wow, no, 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 wow, wow. And he was like, that's amazing. That's some cool shit. What's it mean? I said, it means you're an idiot. That's what it means. <laughs> Direct translation. That's my African name joke. Okay. So once we're over there, glad we've got a lot of laughter, ladies and gentlemen. Glad you are enjoying the jokes. Uh, so let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. So once I've introduced myself, what I then do for the set is I choose a bunch of themes that I want to do, which I'm introducing to my myself to the audience and commenting on stuff about the world. So this is still the first third of the show. So I probably follow this up with another joke where I'm introducing myself to the audience. So let's do, following the heritage round, let's do a high school days round, a high school days round, okay? So this would be me. I've said I'm from Malawi, I'm from Africa. This is something about Africa. Now let me tell you something about when I was a kid, okay? So let's get some votes, let's get some votes. Uh, from my high school days, you can either listen to a joke about Mandela's grandson, you can listen to a joke about British education, or you can listen to a joke about getting dumped. Vote away, ladies and gentlemen, vote away and vote quickly because uh, there's a bit of a lag between you typing and it coming to me. And you can even just say first, second, or third if you just want to type quickly. And please, everybody vote. I see 52 people currently watching live, and I only see a few people voting. Vote, vote, vote. <laughs> I feel like I'm someone trying to encourage you all to, to vote for president, right? Okay, we've got verse, okay, we've got number one, Mandela's grandson one, we've got uh, British education one, we've got Mandela's grandson another, we've got Mandela's grandson two. Mandela's grandson is, and British education two. So British education is two, Mandela's grandson, and British, oh, so British education and Mandela are tied. Okay, now the, oh, this is a close race. So Mandela, British education, they are so tied that I will do both of them. Oh, Abdul, you're the only one who wants number three. Okay, so here we go. So let's, let's do British education followed by, and they actually combine, okay, they combine. I'll mix them together, okay? So I'm from Africa, right? A lot of people don't understand that I actually went to British schools, posh British schools in Africa, right? Essentially Hogwarts Africa edition. <laughs> but when I look back, the curriculum did not make sense. Did not make sense because I was in Africa surrounded by Africans. One school I went to was in Kenya, Kenya. Language of Kenya is Swahili, right? Hakuna Matata, That's, Disney did not make that up. Right? There is a language called Swahili. It never came up in my school in Kenya. Instead, they taught me English, French, Latin. Latin's a dead language. There's no one walking around going, I'm a bow, I'm a bus, I'm a bat. It's a waste of time. Right? History class. I was in Kenya. I was in Swaziland, African countries. I never learned African history. No, I learned Henry VIII, William the Conqueror. Right? And I accepted it then, but I realized as I got older in loads of subtle ways, my school was telling me that my culture was horrible and yours was awesome. And then I moved to the UK and I heard people saying, why do all these immigrants come here? And I was like, well, you bloody prepared me. Where did you think I was gonna go? Should have taught me Japanese if they didn't want me here. <laughs> but I am not complaining about the schools. I actually went to extremely brilliant schools, like the school I went to in Swaziland, Waterford Kamplaba, it was a brilliant school. And it even had like the children of diplomats. And one of the people who was one of my schoolmates was Nelson Mandela's grandson. Yeah, he was a total dick. He was a total dick. It's really weird when he, he bullied all of us and he was a you know self-righteous, arrogant prick. And it's really weird when somebody whose grandfather you idolize is bullying you because he's like punching you and you're like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, could you introduce me? Ah, ah, he's such an inspiration. Ah, ah, okay, could he just sign this? Like, 
He was such a dick. But I don't even blame him for being a dick. You know, this was when he was a kid. And of course, you'd be a dick, right? Because think about it this way. He was, gro the school was so proud that he was one of the children, right? They used to brag. They used, they were never going to punish him because they were so glad. I wonder if it's like that for, you know, the children of the queen or something like that, because your school masters do not want to punish you. They never were gonna punish Nelson Mandela's grandson, no matter how bad he was at school, and they certainly weren't gonna give him detention. There you go. You know that little detention gag? I didn't write the gag. I wrote everything up to there. That's a tag. What you gotta understand is when we develop jokes, the first time we do a joke, sometimes there's another comedian there who watches the joke and says, why don't you try adding this line? So I had done the entire joke about how he wouldn't be punished ever. And a friend of mine, Scott Bennett, who's a very funny comedian who has a streaming show you should check out. He was like, why don't you try saying they wouldn't give him detention? I tried it, it brought the house down. Thanks to that tag from Scott Bennett. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Now let's take a look. Let's take a look at the chat, some very bizarre chat. Okay, we've got uh, Shang Dalf D. Gay says, I want to bang the Alamil Crossing dog. So, okay, I don't know if, okay, this man is trying to make his own jokes. I won't read it out, but I will put it on the screen. So if anybody wants to read this, um, I don't know if you are making a joke or having a breakdown, Skank Dolph, but uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I am not sure. Actually, you're typing a lot. So I, I definitely think you are trying to be a comedian. Hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna criticize you. Keep writing them jokes and you will find your audience. <laughs> Ahmed Rami says, my father's a great physicist and I'm a total dick too. I'm sure you are not. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, the British name one was better than Mandela joke, but you enjoyed them both. Interesting, excellent, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay. Uh, um, can you make a comment on how people say the U.S. and the U.K. have a bond, but the U.S. hates us? I actually would question, Michael Pegg, your assertion that the U.S. hates the U.K. because that has not been, I've not really seen that as a uh, fact. Okay, let us in ignore Skank Dalf. I think that's what we should do. But everybody is welcome. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let us continue the comedy casino. So... I've introduced myself. I've said a little bit about my youth. One tact would then be to talk about youth as a whole, youth as a whole. So I might switch into a sub. This is to make it seem like it's coming off the top of my head. When a comedian seems to be going to the next thought and the next thought, often it's pre-prepared. And so I would be, I'm on the subject of my youth. Let's talk about kids. So vote either for a joke about adoption, a joke about kids at the table, or a joke about Lego. Make your votes, make them fast, make them count. Even you, Skank Dalf, make your votes, make it count. Okay, can I make a joke about Ghana? I do, I, this is not a thing where I'm just making random jokes up, but if you go to my special, on what the African said, there is a joke about Ghanaians. You can find that on Amazon or on Next Up. Okay, excellent. How are you doing? Welcome back, Shay Baker. Make your votes for what joke you want to hear. Adoption, kids at the table, or Lego. Good to have you back, Shay. Okay. Uh, shout out to you. And I will indeed keep going. Okay, we've got a vote for Lego. We've got a vote for Lego. A vote for kids at the table. We've got... Uh, another vote for kids at the table, two kids at the table, one Lego. We've got three kids at the table. Oh my God, maybe kids at the table is the winner by far. I do Let's give it one, 30 more seconds, see if anything comes up, see if anything else comes up. Adoption, one vote for adoption, which is actually my favorite joke of them, but it seems that kids at the table is the winner by far, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, maybe the adoption one isn't winning because these people have watched my comedy special and know it. Okay, so let us go with Kids at the Table, which is the most popular of the people who voted. I will say this, ladies and gentlemen, it is hard. I'm not a parent. I don't want to be a parent, right? 
I do not want to be a parent. I have got nieces, no, you know, I love them, but I like being able to visit them and play with them for an hour and then give them back, right? I don't want to have a full-time kid. Seems like a lot of work, particularly because in this day and age, it's harder for parents. Like, think about when kids are at the table, right? Things have got so complicated. You know, 50 years ago, the number one thing parents had to say to kids at the table was, don't chew with your mouth full, right? Right now, the number one thing that parents have to say to kids at the table is no devices at the table, right? No technology at the table. That's the number one complaint parents have of kids. I kind of wish that was what was going on when I was a kid, right? Because it would have been hilarious because it would have been me saying, oh, but mom, I love the toaster. I love the toaster, but mom, the, the, the vacuum cleaner is my favorite. I love it. That there is your vote, the kids at the table joke. I hope you enjoyed it. Welcome home. Welcome back to Chelsea, who has had a fabulous day of busking and made lots of money, I'm sure. Wonderful. Okay, let's keep going, ladies and gentlemen. So after such a point where I have introduced myself, talked about where I'm from, talked a bit about children, I'm expanding it out from me to society. So I might talk about something pertinent to what's going on in the world. So I might decide to talk about racists. Racists. So for the Corona Cast Comedy Casino, you get to choose which joke you want to hear from racists demonstrating lazy racists or BNP full version. Why do I say BNP full version? Because on Britain's Got Talent, I did a one-liner, which people don't realize is part of a longer routine. So if you want to hear the full routine, you can vote for that, or you can vote for lazy racists, or you can vote for racist demonstration. Make your votes now. Make your votes now. Make your votes now. Vote, vote, vote. Vote fast, vote quick. Hello to Chelsea, says Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Uh, if I was at my epoch, my favorite would be the refrigerator. <laughs> Definitely true, Rami. And make your vote for which of the racist round jokes you want to hear. I think there's a lag. There's definitely a lag. And we have lost a few people. Anytime I go longer than 30 minutes, I start losing people. But uh, I think we'll still do two or three more rounds. Oh, some people are coming back. I was wrong to uh, make. Okay, so we've got BNC, BNP full routine, full routine, full routine. I shouldn't even have said. I shouldn't even have said that it was the thing where I started on BGT. It gave the others no chance. So we've got all the votes want the full routine. Oh, we've got one vote for a lazy racist, a second row for lazy racist, three for, for uh, lazy racists, but it seems that the full BNP routine is the winner. So let me just say to you, what I did on Britain's Got Talent was simply the first line of this, which is that people ask me why I moved to the UK because I was watching television and I saw an angry guy on television saying, immigrants take all the good jobs, all the good women. And I was like, wow, that sounds like a good deal to me. They're running an advertising program. Now, this actually was part of a longer routine about the BNP. The BNP, for anyone who's not in the UK, is a right-wing party called the British National Party. And I used to do these jokes about them, right? I used to say, the first one was, and this is totally true, they once slipped a little flyer through my letterbox. I don't think they knew who lived there, right? And I looked at it, it made me laugh so much that I wanted to use it in my show. And I went to like a print shop and I was like, hey, can you blow this up, right? And they looked at me like, you remember? I was like, yes, yes I am, right, yes I am. And what was funny about the flyer, it said, you need to vote for us, because if you don't, 80 million. Muslim, and they capitalized Muslim. I yelled because they capitalized it and underlined it three times. 80 million Muslim Turks are going to overrun the UK. And I was like, whoa, whoa, where, where, where? And, and, and I checked. I, I did some research. And at the time, the population of Turkey was 78 million. So the BNP believed that the entire Turkish nation was going to empty 
and fly over to the UK. But even then, we are two million short. Two million short. They must have been counting pregnant women. And they just believe on the flight over, they're going to be popping out reinforcements. Just boom, 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 boom. So this is part of what I would say. And how the routine would end, though, is actually on a happy note. The BNP no longer exists. The BNP fell apart. The BNP fell apart. And the most hilarious thing is the reason the BNP fell apart. They forgot to file the paperwork to renew their status as a political party in time. They were defeated by admin. Admin defeated them. Something which never would have happened if they had a few immigrants working for them. Boom! <laughs> In your face! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let us keep going. Let us keep going to the comedy casino. So now that I have introduced the subject of race, if this was a normal comedy club, I would probably go from something race related in the past to something race in the present. So I would probably do a joke about Black Lives Matter. So your choices in the comedy casino is you can get a joke about All Lives Matter. You can get a joke about the solution to racism, or you can get a joke about Madonna's son and BLM. Make your votes now. Vote quickly, because there is a lag. I'm glad you are all enjoying the jokes. Glad you enjoyed that one. Glad you found that one funny, Rui Fernandez. Uh, excellent. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, OK. I'm glad you liked the pregnant woman. Uh, gag. Exit. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we've got one vote for the solution to racism. Any others? Madonna's son. Okay, BLM is the subject. <laughs> You've got to choose either All Lives Matter, Solution to Racism, or Madonna's son. Oh, okay, so we've got Madonna's son, Solution, and all lives matter. One, one, one. Madonna's son and BL Madonna's son. Oh, Madonna's son seems to have won. Madonna's son. Oh no, solution to racism. Solution. We've got solution to racism and Madonna's son in a tie. We need one person to be the tiebreaker. Which one do you want? Solution to racism or Madonna? Dave Stewart is a tiebreaker, and you want Madonna's son. So let's go way back to the week where George Floyd had been murdered. And there was a big flare up. There was a big demonstrations. It hit people all around the world. People got very emotional. People decided to show their support in all sorts of ways, right? Some people were showing their support by tweeting. Some people were showing their support in all sorts of ways. David Banda, okay? This is Madonna, adopted son, Malawian, we are to blame for this, okay? He decided to show support to the Black Lives Matter movement via the medium of interpretive dance, okay? Interpretive dance and Michael Jackson's hits. This is what he did. This is how he did it, right? He got so worked up, and I, I got to validate validate his outrage. We were all outraged, and he was like, okay, I got to show my support. Got camera on himself. And he played They Don't Care About Us, which is, you know, uh, uh, Michael Jackson. All I want to say is they don't really care about who does. Yeah. He starts playing that and he starts dancing and he's dancing with the rage in his eyes. He's just like, yeah, I'm angry. I'm expressing it. Yeah, I'm angry. And, and look, you know what happened next. The Internet made a lot of fun of him. Right. We all tore him apart. We all, I, I, I threw one or two gags in there. He's a young man. He was just expressing himself. And look, in, in our defense, we are just not used to expressions of rage via interpretive dance and Michael Jackson hits. And we are lesser for it, right? We are lesser for it. So I would like to propose that we all need to start expressing our rage via Michael Jackson hits and interpretive dance. So let's say someone breaks up with you right? Cheats on you. You find out. Just say, who is it? Is it a friend of mine? <laughs> oh, when I wrote this joke, I had a second Michael Jackson hit, which I used to use for something. Ah! I'm sure you can imagine. Choose your own 
bad or remember the time, but you get it. So that's the gag from back then. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's keep going. So once I had done something about race and uh, racism, I might talk about, I might just go into um, ugh, just another, a little bit of current events or stuff that has been relevant for the last year. So the next round is the disgraced celebrities round, the disgraced celebrities round, okay? And for this round, I named them like dwarves. You may be aware of the seven dwarves, sleepy and dopey and uh, hungry. Was hungry as a dwarf, <laughs> but sleepy and dopey and dog. I, I, don't, I, I forget who, they, grumpy is one of them. But anyway, these are the three disgraced celebrities. You choose which one you wanna hear the joke. Wanky, rapey, or racisty. I know racist isn't a word, but if I did racy, you'd think I'm, they're, they're being racy. So it's wanky, rapey, and racisty. Make your votes now. Make your votes now, right? Number one, two, or three. You don't have to type rapey, racisty, or wanky. Okay, so we've got two votes for wanky, two votes for wanky. Sean A wants wanky. Sarah Hall wants wanky. Uh, and sexy. Sexy wasn't one of them, Ahmed Rani. <laughs> oh, you're making a joke. Wanky, three wanky. How interesting. Everybody wants wanky. Okay, I guess it's just a funnier word than the others. Also, separately, before I do the joke, put your guesses for who wanky is, who rapey is, and who racisty is. Okay, I'm gonna do wanky, but while I do wanky, do your guesses for who the other two were. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, wanky, another vote for wanky from uh, Jeremy Anton. I'm sure those of you who follow comedy know exactly who I'm talking about, right? So, one of my favorite comedians, right? One of my favorite comedians, one of the comedians who not only was one of my favorites, he was someone who I was almost trying to shape my career after. One of my comedy heroes was Louis C.K. Louis C.K., brilliant comedian, very prolific, very funny, very impressive. And then he let us all down. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord, people. It was very... Some of you may not be aware of this, but it came out that he had a thing for whipping his dick out in front of random women. At... Look, I'm not sure if that's how he did it. I'm just trying to in the medium of interpretive dance, like Madonna's son trying to show, it, it, it was crazy. He would wank in front of unsuspected women. And it was just one of those things which it, it it's so disappointing, so horrible. And it, it happens so often with people who you admire that you find out they're doing something totally reprehensible, something that totally criminal, so, totally terrible. And it puts you in this weird situation where you have to ask yourself, can you still watch their comedy? Can you still watch their comedy? Or if it's a writer, can you still read their books? Some people say yes, some people say no. I mean, I've got loads of episodes of things which I didn't watch, and I was like, can I still go when he's on tour? Can I still go watch him? A lot of people ask them the questions, but I'm a comedian. There's another question which I had to ask, because you see, he's brilliant, and he is funnier than me, right? And on occasion, I had to ask myself if maybe, maybe that was his secret. Maybe makes you funnier. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying that I approve it, but imagine that was his secret. Now look, I've done many auditions for Live at the Apollo, and I didn't get it. So maybe right now is the way that I can get to the next level. So uh, people watching the Corona cast, I get to level up. Don't worry, I'm just kidding. I won't do it. Glad you found it. Glad you find that funny. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed that, Sean A. And you are right, Ahmed. Uh, Rapey was indeed Bill Cosby. Rapey was indeed Bill Cosby. Uh, Racisty was actually, uh, it was Wiley was Wiley, but there are a lot of people who could have done jokes 
for racisty. Okay. <laughs> His secret. What's mine, Tishane? I'll never tell my secret. I will never tell. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the final the final two, the final two, the final two. So we have a one-liner round, a one-liner round. Now, one-liners, I think you're all aware, are jokes which are just a sentence. First sentence is the setup. Second sentence is the punchline. So the penultimate joke I will tell on this comedy casino is a one-liner. You have got the choice of TikTok. You have got the choice of Tour de France, and you have got the choice of woman who lived in a shoe. This is literally a one-liner. So vote quickly because the whole joke you're voting for probably takes 10 seconds or 15 seconds at most. So vote, vote, vote. TikTok, Tour de France, or the woman who lived in a shoe. Make your votes now. Vote, vote, vote. Mm. Glad you enjoyed that joke, Andre Pereira. And you know this, when I used to do it in a tour, I actually used to stick my leg out and I used to make an absurd um, interpretive dance of what he's doing. Okay, we've got TikTok. We've got women who lived in the shoe. Women who lived in the shoe and TikTok are tied. Uh, we've got um, women who lived in the shoe is <laughs> number three. <laughs> women have, we've got four. We've got five on women who lived in the shoe. Okay, we're going to do women who lived in a shoe. This is probably going to be quite an anticlimax because this is one of the silliest jokes I ever wrote, right? So silly, in fact, that a friend of mine who is a children's entertainer said, can I use it, please, to entertain three-year-olds? And I said, more power to you. Okay, so here it is. The, there once was a woman who lived in a shoe. She got athlete's foot on her face. <laughs> It's so silly. I'm going to say it again. There once was a woman who lived in a shoe. She got athlete's foot on her face. And if you ever retell that joke, understand you have to say it like that. On her face. Okay. Final joke of the day. We're going to end with a big finish. I always end my shows with a story. I often will end with a big, crazy, wacky story. So you have got the option of three of my best jokes to end this episode and this week's Corona cast. It's off for the weekend. We'll be back on Monday. So your choices are countdown. Oops. It's meant to be, sorry, it's meant to be scrolling. Okay. Your choices are countdown, exorcism, or getting blackmailed. Make your votes. Make your votes. Make your votes. Make your votes. What you want to see. What you want to see. What you want to see. Vote quickly. Vote quickly for the last joke of the day. Also, while waiting for you to vote, I will say if you have enjoyed the last 40 minutes of jokes, please consider contributing to the cause. Underneath my name, you will see kofi.com slash Delisa Chapano. There's a little hyphen between Ko and Fee. If you go donate there, it will help me immensely in this time when I have no salary. I have the odd gig like the ones in Liverpool, but honestly, I'm making an eighth of what I used to make. So life is hard. Every penny is appreciated. No amount is too small. You can tip me a pound. You can tip me two pounds like a stripper and I'll shake my breasts in your face. Or you can <laughs> tip me a large amount, right? If you tip me a large amount, well, I, I, I will, I will, I will look, I would say I would offer to sleep with you, but this is internet, so I can't do that. But I will I will um I will describe the things I would do to you graphically <laughs> to thanks, but that's for amounts of five hundred pounds and over only. Okay, so don't put in four ninety nine and start asking for that. Okay, we've got our votes, we got our votes. Okay, we've got exorcism, we've got two votes for exorcism, we've got one vote for um, getting blackmail. We've got another vote for countdown. Another vote for countdown. Wow. Please, please, exorcism. Please, exorcism. Everyone likes exorcism. Haven't you seen this? I thought this is a show, joke which is on the internet, but I will do it again. I will do it again because people clearly like it. So let us do, um, the exorcism joke to end this, today's episode. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, my family was very religious, very, very religious. 
teenagers, when I was 14, I started acting up. A lot of your parents would have called a psychiatrist or something. My dad called an exorcist. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever been exercised. It's not fun. They strap you to the bed with ropes. They start gibbering in Latin. I understood every word. Against the wall, there was a wooden crucifix. My dad thinks you spare the rod, you spoil the child. This was like a five-foot crucifix. My dad grabbed it off the wall, passed it to the priest and said, Beat him! Beat the devil out of him! The priest began to whack me. I was on the bed going, ah, ah, ah! So understandably, when the priest said, Satan! I figured I'd better play along. Now, I've watched the Exorcist movie. I don't know if you've watched the Exorcist movie. It's a classic. It's a classic. I watched the Exorcist movie several times, even though it scared the bejesus out of me. I watched it. <laughs> now, I cannot turn my head around 360 degrees, but I gave it a good shot. I was like, <laughs> and I put on my best devil voice. I was like, yes, I am Lucifer. And he said, Satan. Leave this boy. And I said, uh, 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 I'm leaving. Then I got a great idea. I pointed at my dad and said, I'm going into him. So ladies and gentlemen, that there is how I build a comedy show. That is how I build a comedy show. Uh, of course, I don't offer people options. What I would do, as you see, is you open the show with a joke which introduces you to the audience do a few audience which are personal about you, then go from talking about you to talking about society, and then go from talking about society to talking about something very recent, and then have a big, fat, funny finish. And that there is an amateur guide to building a comedy set. Thank you so much for being part of the CoronaCast comedy show. I'll be back on Monday. And good luck to any of you who decide to apply these skills in creating your own comedy sets. See you in the world. Stay safe.